Uh, this week, the New Mexico Supreme Court rejected a petition from the Fort Sill Apache tribe to require that Governor Martinez negotiate a gaming compact with the tribe. The Fort Sill Apache tribe has a reservation in southern New Mexico and has sought for several years to open a casino on tribal land. And state lawmakers recently approved a new gaming compact for some tribes, but the Fort Sill Apache tribe was excluded. New Mexico in Focus producer Sarah Gustavus sat down with the chairman during the legislative session to talk about the tribe's history and why gaming is an important priority for the tribe right now. Chairman Haozos, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Before we talk about gaming, let's go back a little bit to the Fort Sill Apache tribe's recognition federally and here in New Mexico. You're recognized federally. You have land here in New Mexico. This is your ancestral home of your tribe. Last year, the state Supreme Court ruled that Governor Martinez and her administration must recognize the tribe here and allow it to be part of discussions in the government-government relationship with the state here in New Mexico. Did that change your interactions with the state? It did in that we did get invited to the um, state tribal uh, banquet this year. But aside from that, not too much. We've still, despite trying since she was elected, have never been able to meet or sit down with the governor. One of the issues is the tribe's desire to build a full casino here in southern New Mexico on your reservation. Why does the tribe want to build that casino? Well, this is our homeland. My grandfather was born in New Mexico in the 1800s. All of our people are from, uh, they're from New Mexico or Arizona, from our homelands. And we've long sought to return. Ever since our people were removed as prisoners of war, they wanted to come home. Um, we uh, had a lawsuit settlement in 2007 um, with a neighboring tribe in Oklahoma that um, filed suit and the federal government. And the re resolution of that settlement was that we would build and be able to develop um, a gaming facility on our land in Luna County, which we've had in trust since 2002. So um, that's really just part of the long-term uh, plans of the tribe. Um, I really want to, to see our tribe come back home in a complete full way, to have our people live here, to have our tribal operations here, and of course to have um, economic development activities here. The, the most um, substantial common is, is Indian gaming. So um, I've always envisioned that um, facility that we're planning and developing in Luna County to be the economic engine that would allow us to, to drive ourselves home, basically. What other kinds of economic development do you think could come around that if it was built? We have gaming, we have a casino in Oklahoma, we have that, in addition to that, we also have a non-gaming business, government contracting business that does work really all over the world um, for uh, the military, for the um, other Department of Defense, other federal agencies. Uh, I'm hoping that we can relocate that to Southern New Mexico in a fairly, um, or at least open an office in a fairly short order and any, other, any business um, that a tribe has, uh, provides opportunities for tribes, we will look into. We've looked into a number of them. But right now we've been focusing on developing this non-gaming business, this uh, Fort Sill Apache Industries, we call it. We have about 300 people that work for us in that business now. What kind of gaming have you had already on your reservation in southern New Mexico? Well, we haven't had a whole lot of gaming in, uh, on our reservation. We offered paper bingo from April of 2009 until the end of July of 2009. And we were uh, shut down by the federal government uh, under the, the contention that the land was not legal for gaming. Uh, it wasn't the federal government, it was an agency uh, called the National Indian Gaming Commission. The chairman of that agency issued a notice of violation and that has been under appeal since then. Um, but we did offer paper bingo for what, four months. Indian law can be very complicated. These laws about the FET with the federal government and the state government and do, governing um, things like gaming. What do you think someone who doesn't know anything about this should know about the challenges your tribe is facing as you try to set up this program? We want to come home. We want to be here. We want to have a seat at the table when things are decided. We want to be treated fairly and, and given the same opportunities the other, other New Mexico tribes have been given and it hasn't happened. Ever since our people were removed, ever since Geronimo was taken out in chains, the Apaches have been kept out. And we've tried and we've tried and we're going to continue to try. If it takes the rest of my life, we'll try until we have full and fair treatment and are being treated in the same way that all the other native tribes in the state are treated because we are a New Mexico tribe. That is our reservation and this is our homeland. I'm hearing you say this is not just about money. What have no. you done to reach out 
to Governor Martinez and her administration to try to be a part of the negotiations over the gaming compact and the new compact? So initially we reached out to Governor Martinez um, about the notice, the appeal process that we had in, um, that started in 2009. When she came to the office, we, we reached out to her, her attorney and asked if they would consider dropping, dropping their participation in the appeal because it was started in the previous administration. And as a result of that, um, they didn't. They actually made a filing that we'd asked them to stop, but they put a note in that filing that said, you should consider a two-part determination. And that a two-part determination is when the governor says it's, okay, it's good for the state and the federal government says it's good for the tribe to open a casino. So we actually went down that process and spent several hundred thousand dollars on the process of uh, having um, road shows. Basically, uh, I, I, I went to, I counted at least 80 different meetings in 2012 with local, tribal, and state officials. And we tried to meet with the governor on that. Um, we were never able to do so. Um, we, when, the, when this compact is now being considered, first came up three years ago, um, there was law that was going to be changed that would have cut off any tribe's ability to sign on to uh, the, the existing compacts. So in 2013, I think it was, we submitted both the 2001 and 2007 compacts, existing gaming compacts that all the tribes now uh, who offer casinos are using and the governor's required by law to sign them. And we asked for um, her to sign those and get them back to us and never got a reply. Uh, she did go on the radio in Dimming the next day and say that we were not approved for gaming ever because of the federal government, um, which is not true because at the same time, they sent a, have sent a letter out saying that it, there's no obstacle. There needs to be a determination by Interior. And in fact, um, the appeal with the National Indian Gaming Commission that we've been um, working on since 2009, and we currently are in federal court in DC, that appeal could be settled by Interior today, or in IGC today. Um, but um, the, the interactions with the governor have been nil, and it started ever since she was elected. It continued through 2007, 2001 compacts three years ago. We didn't know anything about this compact until probably the news or um, some of my folks here in Santa Fe told me about it. So in fact, if there were tribes that were negotiating, we were not invited. You know, the lawsuit that we won last year required us to be uh, in invited to a summit and required us, our name to be put on the website. But it doesn't require us to participate in any other, other number of meetings. Uh, interesting thing about the compact, it has another summit just for tribes that are signed on to the, to the compact. So there will be a diff an additional summit that we'll be excluded from if this compact goes through. Now, I saw in an article in the Albuquerque Journal, a representative working for the governor said that Fort Sill wasn't singled out in the, in the current compact negotiations. Do you feel like that's true? We were singled out. This is about the, the language that's in the compact twice, at the beginning and at the end, only affects one tribe in the state, Fort Sill Apache tribe. I was at a compact hearing this weekend. I saw the governor's attorney say that the whole reason that the language is in there was to prevent tribes from using land purchased after 2008. But that's not true because there are tribes with plans to build casinos on land purchased after 2008. And that particular part of the compact, that, that particular part of the law is not quoted in the compact. Only the part of the law that applies to the Fort Sill Apache tribe. If you built a casino on your reservation, would that have some broader impact, economic impact, on the local community? Jobs for non-tribal members, any other impact? And have you been speaking with other communities around you? We have a tremendous amount of support from the local community because of the jobs that we would bring to Southern New Mexico. You know, I think the unemployment rate last time I looked was around 20 or 22% in Luna County. And we would bring um, initially several hundred jobs um, in our project. So, and these are good jobs. Our tribe has a philosophy of providing good jobs with full benefits and the kinds of, uh, the kinds of jobs that people will get um, really in, 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 usually in larger cities that, that we provide that kind of work for people and we have a tremendous amount of uh, support for that. Um, I've, in 2012, it's been some time when we started, when I was, um, 
undergoing the two-part determination that I've talked about earlier and met with all the counties in the area and all the cities in the area and there's nearly universal support for our return um, and in particular in Deming and Luna County because of the benefits that we will bring and the economic support and development that we'll bring to the county. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.